talking, but we're going to get started. I'm going to uh, take 10 or 15 minutes and then really just want to open it up to questions and just uh, have a good back and forth Q&A. I think that's always the most helpful in these kind of situations. Um, and if you have questions about your favorite group, or whether it's the 65 or the 501 or the 505 or the 85 or whatever it might be, I'm happy to take those as well. I wanted to talk about today um, sort of how I, at the TTC, as the head of communications of the TTC, my official title is Executive Director of Corporate Communications. Um, I'd also like to go by the Chief Explainer and Messenger as well because a lot of what I do online is explain what's happening, uh, what may have happened, or uh, why something happened, and try and explain uh, what it is that, that, that is going on uh, to give our customers, to give the public a sense of uh, what is happening with their commute, if there's a problem um, with the system. So um, it's about managing crisis. Uh, when, I, when I talk about crisis, I'm talking, you know, for us, a crisis is, is, has to be pretty significant has to be, you know, a, um, a fatality, for example, a, a worker, a very serious injury to a worker, or, or a fatality to a worker, um, a crash of some kind where there is a you know, serious injury to death. But that's what you can see. Other organizations, uh, the threshold for a crisis is uh, maybe higher, maybe lower, um, but, but frankly, it's, 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 it's not for any of us to suggest what's a crisis and what isn't a crisis. It may not be a crisis for us, but it may be for you when you need to get somewhere and you can't because, because the system is um, And so I'm going to talk about how I deal with, with crisis online, um, primarily through, a, through my Twitter account, um, how the TTC sort of manages those issues um, and its reputation. Um, and it's with customers, with the public, um, but, also, uh, but also with the media. So this is the Chinese symbol uh, for crisis. The symbol on the left signifies danger, and on the right is opportunity. So it, it, it's interesting, you know, so, so, so the Chinese character is you, know, you got danger, you got opportunity, that creates a crisis. It's an opportunity, of course, then to address what that issue might be, and I think it would make it for a, a pretty cool tattoo, actually. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> That would be bad tattoo. <laughs> so I, I have that, I don't know where that slide went, I have a slide here. This is a slide of a tattoo that I have actually on my left arm, and it says no comment. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I had that slide in here, I don't know where the heck it went, it'll probably be later, but anyway, you can't no comment this, right? This is, um, you know, this is, that's pretty serious. Now thankfully nobody was seriously injured. And that's, and that's us doing this to ourselves. Uh, that was on Boxing Day a few years ago, by the way. So you can't no comment that. You can't no comment that. Um, and of course, you know, we are in the news every single day. And it could be politics that's driving the news uh, around the TTC. It could be you know, issues around expansion, fare increases, uh, delays to the delivery of our new streetcars from Bombardier. Um, it could be delays to service be safety issues. The fact of the matter is, we are in the news every day, uh, and there's no getting around that. And so we need to respond to those uh, those issues, and so we must always be prepared. Preparation um, in, cor in communications in the world in which I operate, whether it's online, whether it's with the media, uh, whether it's one-on-one -on -one with, with individuals or, or um, you know, doing a live interview, for example, preparation is, is really issues management one-on-one. -on -one. We are in an operating environment in public transit. Things are going to happen. Things are going to go wrong. Um, it's run by individuals. It's run by people. It's mechanical. Um, things will fail. So we need to keep our customers informed. We need to keep the media informed. So while I can speak to each of you individually on Twitter, for example, um, and with an app reply, for example, we also need to talk to, we, we talk to the mass media. The mainstream media are still critically important to the work that do uh, because they, they, not everybody is online at the same time and so uh, the media is very, very helpful in getting our messages out. We need to keep our board informed and of course we need to keep our employees informed. We are, uh, we, we maintain and I maintain our, with my staff, 24-7 uh, on-call media line. Um, 
I am on call 24-7 just because of the nature of my job, is, as is the CEO, my boss, Andy Pfeiffer, uh, and the executive that I've dedicated uh, individual who's also on call 24-7. So we must be prepared. That's the nature uh, of, of, of what we do. This is something that I talk about all the time with my own staff, events like this. Um, it's about making sure you do the right thing. Doing the right thing in a crisis when you're dealing with an issue um, will, will really carry you, uh, carry you through that crisis. I mean, I don't need to tell you, I shouldn't need to tell anybody that you know, in this job, uh, or any job for that matter, you know, fly, obfuscate, hide, um, be professional. Right? But you also be a person. Challenge misrepresentation, okay? correct misinformation, um, but you got to be the authority, you got to feed that beast, because if you don't, someone else will, and it may be with, with misinformation. So it's about doing the right thing, and that's around being open, honest, and transparent. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So how do I do all those things? Well, <clears throat> I'm at the table. So the head of communications, in my view, for any organization the size of the TTC, needs to be what I, what I call being at the table. You need to be on the leadership team of the TTC. So I am. As the executive director of Cor corporate communications, I report directly to the CEO. My colleagues uh, are the, the other executives, the chief people officer, the chief service officer, the chief customer officer, uh, chief capital officer, uh, the chief of staff, myself, our head of safety. Uh, I'm at the table, and, and that allows uh, me to, it gives me the authority and my team the authority uh, to, to answer questions directly online to deal with issues immediately when they happen. Because you don't have time, of course, you know, to seek approvals uh, for a tweet. Uh, you know, I mean, how ridiculous would that be uh, in the world of, 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 of instantaneous communications to have to you know, get approvals to, to answer a, a, a basic question, to, to deal with issues when they come up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I have the authority to do that because I am at the table. There's no sort of policy on the fly. I'm aware of the issues. I get those answers and address them. Which then speaks to the reputation of the organization. The TTC has a um, um, corporate plan, and in that corporate plan, it has seven key objectives, of which reputation is one. And so, and, and so to speak to reputation, you know, I, what I often say again that around reputation is that, and what communications can do around reputation is that, here's what we can't do. We can't fi fix bad decisions, we can't fix bad policy, and we can't fix stupid. People do stupid things. Our own people can do them, customers can do them, other motorists can do them, you know, bad decisions are get, get made. Communications can't fix that, right? We can't, um, we can't put that, that toothpaste back in the tube, uh, but we can help mitigate. We can deal uh, with issues when they, when they arise. And, and it may be nobody's fault, and it's not about fault, frankly. It's about, it, it's about ensuring that, um, that the organization's long-term reputation is maintained. And we can do that by explaining why things happen. So, last March, just north of College uh, Station, uh, at around 11 o'clock at night, this, 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 this liquid material started to ooze from the tunnel. We, don't, we didn't know what it was. It had an odor to it that smelled faintly like diesel, or fuel, or kerosene, or something. So clearly, in a, in a subway tunnel, in a subway situation, anything that, that had the potential to be an explosive, was, was certainly a no-go. So we halted service at around 11 p.m. that night and began investigating. Um, these are pictures that I took, by the way, the next morning. Uh, that is um, that is at the track um, and sort of starting to cooling there. Um, and of course, as I say, we, we're not going to run service when we're dealing with something that we don't know what it is. So that morning, we had no service operating between Bloor uh, and Union Station. Toronto Fire went down, they took samples. This is a picture of, that, uh, uh, of those vials that we were, we were going to sample to determine what it was. It was determined that it wasn't an explosive, 
okay, so we needed to go in there and do two things. We needed to clean it up before we could resume service, and we needed to, to, to fix that, that, that leak, that crack in the tunnel where the, where the substance was coming from. And I'm not, this, this is just a screen cap of the tweet I sent. We created a video. We went down there. I took those pictures, and then we sent our video crew down there um, with the maintenance crew who um, did all that cleanup, did all the caulking around the crack, um, so that we could get service back up and running, and we did it at about 2 o'clock or 2.30 afternoon. So for 14 hours, we had no subway service on the busiest part of, our, of the subway line between, between Union and Bloor stations for, for a substance that was oozing into the, into the tunnel. We had no idea where it was coming from. To this day, we don't know the, 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 the source of it, although we, we think it may have been some sort of uh, balloon that was frozen underground for a long period of time. That, through a thaw, because this was in March, it was very cold last year, through that thaw, um, it, it broke free and made its way, uh, as, as liquid does, to, to, to its the source uh, through, uh, through the subway, in this case, through the tunnel. So, uh, so that was an example of, you know, of, of how you dealt with the situation online. And it's about informing our customers about what is going on. Why is the subway not operating? Why is it I have to wait for a shuttle bus? What the heck is going on? And if we can communicate why something is happening immediately like this to you and through the media, um, then for the vast majority of people, they understand. They only want to know what is happening, why, and what's the ETA of getting service back up and running. We were able to, to, to address all of those things, uh, both through traditional means, you know, traditional media relations, but also um, by using Twitter. So I want to talk a little bit about transparency because <clears throat> for a public agency like, like Transit, for a public agency of any kind, frankly, um, transparency is so, so important to credibility, to, to, to that reputation. So you need to own issues. We own that issue. We don't know where this, what the source was. We're not suggesting it came from, from, you know, from some nefarious source or some construction and blaming somebody. We have to take, you know, we'll figure out where the, what the source is later if we can, um, but you need to own it. You say what you know, you say what you don't know. You answer your critics. Yeah, we have critics, absolutely. We have supporters, though, too. Uh, and, and you need to embrace those supporters and retweet those supporting, uh, those supporting messages when you get them. But also, we need to answer your critics. And as I said earlier, um, you need to dispel myths. You know, for, for a public agency, <coughs> again, you know, being honest, open, and transparent really does help build your credibility over time. We have an ongoing issue, even to this day, um, around um, uh, benefits fraud. Benefits fraud basically is, in, in this particular issue, People making claims for products that they never received, and they, they share the proceeds with the supplier, the police investigation, the arrests that they made, uh, more arrests will likely be made. And I, and I raise this here only because there, there's that, there's, sort of, there's these dual, dual lanes, if you will, of, of public communication that I'm engaged with. There's the media relations piece, which is this, but there's also the public relations piece, the, the, the customer relations, if you will, uh, dealing with, with these issues when they, when they arise, because issues like, like this are not unique to the TTC. There's a bigger piece at play here, and we are, in fact, taking a leadership role in, in tackling benefits fraud, um, and, and that will, in the end, I think, uh, helps help um, support our, our reputation as one of being credible, credible in this. And likewise, when things happen, um, you know, an individual is charged, one of our, our employees is charged with sexual assault uh, of a girl uh, while on his bus. That's, that's really serious stuff. This isn't something that we can, you know, just, you know, pretend didn't happen. I can just issue tweets about something else that's going on in the system or, uh, you know, some, some, you know, some fun picture about the Bloor Danforth line turning 50 uh, in a couple of weeks. We need to own this stuff. We need to be transparent about it that we are taking this matter seriously. Again, it's about the long-term um, long reputation of the organization and, and doing that through communications. You 
because you're not going to hide from this stuff. People are going to ask about it. Your critics are going to be online, and they're going to be saying something, and then you're going to have to be reacting to it. So, um, you know, there's, there's opportunity to get, you know, ahead of issues, if you will, to own them, as I say, to not let other people um, set that agenda for you. And you know, just recently, the last 24 hours, there was a, uh, a picture on Reddit of a glove, a close-up of a glove of what appeared to be a bed bug. Uh, and they simply said, uh, oh great, there's bed bugs on a 501 streetcar. And so apparently this person saw this bed bug on a 501 streetcar. So a lot of media calls, a lot of questions uh, online about it. So you know, just, just own it. Yeah, we, we you know, there's, yes, there was a bed bug on, on a streetcar. Um, but the fact of the matter is that bed bugs um, do not um, do not infest public transit vehicles. They they'll hop aboard with somebody who may carry it with them, um, but we don't have an infestation on our vehicles. And what you don't see there, because there's just no room here. But what I said on Reddit was, if you have a vehicle number, if you see a bug, whether it's a bed bug or um, a cockroach or anything else that's you know public transit, after all, we, we do want to keep our vehicles clean, but you know, sometimes we're going to see these kinds of things. Let us know so we can get a look at the vehicle clean. We'll fumigate it. We'll do a deep clean. We'll do what we have to do. Um, but again, this is, a, this is one of these issues where, uh, or, or when it, I guess it's an issue. It's, it's really, it's making sure that everybody understands this is not, you know, it's not panic here. Bed bugs exist in the world. They probably exist in, in other public spaces. I'm not going to name any because I don't want to stigmatize any. But they, yeah, they're on a streetcar or on a bus or on a subway train. If you see one, let us know. And we'll, we'll take care of it and make sure that that uh, gets done. So I'm just going to wrap up here and just and then take your questions. But I just wanted to you know, finally around, uh, just, just in closing, around things like transparency, the issue of transparency. Um, it's about leadership. It's about, as an organization, being out there, um, answering your critics, um, embracing your supporters, recognizing that as a public agency that is funded by by the public, that is funded through the fair box, of course, but, but also through taxpayers, that we have an obligation as an organization to be open and transparent. Um, and then we have this amazing tool um, called the internet that allows us to do that, allows us to talk to, 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 to all of you singularly or, or collectively, Really, it's the next best thing to start writing on the video today. And with that, I will take any questions you might have. We've got lots of time.